As the Gender Advisor in AusAid, I'm responsible for helping the Australian Government ensure its International Development Assistance Program is gender sensitive. This is a priority for the Australian Government because it recognises the direct links between gender equality and development, and particularly sound development outcomes. In the development world these days, this isn't something that there's any argument about. Rhetorically, the evidence is in that gender equality is vital for good development. There's no need anymore to make that argument. But as we know, gender equality hasn't been achieved anywhere in the world. In the developed and the developing world alike, gender equality is still not pursued as the central policy goal that it should be. I have to say that this shouldn't come as a surprise to any of us. In seeking gender equality, what we're asking of the world is really challenging. We're asking for economic and political change. We're seeking to change the institutions, our systems of work and the way we remunerate people. We're asking for changes in the way we deal with each other and the way we see each other. These are big, big challenges that the world faces today and I think we all need to be aware of what we're asking of our societies, both ourselves as a, as a donor country and of our developing partners. We need to approach this task with a really long-term vision and we need to be patient, particularly in terms of development where donor countries are working to support partner countries. We really need to be patient and we really need to be sensitive. But that doesn't mean that we can delay the challenges that we face. Still, too many women and girls in developing countries don't receive basic health care or education. Maternal mortality rates, which as you know, are a proxy indicator for women's access to health care more generally and also for their status in society, are far too high in many countries of our region and in fact some of, we have some of the worst maternal mortality rates in our region in the world. Rural women are responsible for over half of the world's food production and produce between 60 and 80 per cent of the food in most developing countries. But women and girls currently still constitute something like 70 per cent of the world's undernourished people. And women and have only about 10 per cent of access to the world's credit. So clearly we are facing some real um, challenges. We still, in our development program, for example, see infrastructure work that doesn't take account of the needs and interests of women, and therefore it works to disadvantage women further. We don't count anywhere in the world women's contribution to the economy through unpaid work, so it's ignored, overlooked, and just not taken into account. And the hurdles to acquiring land for women in parts of our region, let alone to acquire a seat in Parliament, remain as high as they ever have been in history. The level of women's political representation in our region, Asia-Pacific, stands at about 17%. Um, that's not anywhere near half, but it's far higher than the rates we see in the Pacific, where if you exclude Australia, New Zealand and the French territories, women's representation in Parliament stands at 2.5 per cent. Of, of the ten countries in the world that still don't have any women represented in Parliament, five of them are in our, in our region, in the Pacific. So today's discussion, what needs to change for women to get a fair go, is really relevant to all our development work. It's a question that we vitally need to answer to end poverty in the world today. We're not going to do it unless we can support the whole population. So what do we do? Good leadership is critical for change. Good female leaders are particularly critical because the world is facing some challenges that only the whole population can help to address. We know that women and men see things differently, largely because of the way they live their lives. They have different priorities, they have different interests, they have different needs. We need to have all of these represented in our parliaments. We know that the needs of women and men, if they're taken into account in addressing these big, cha these big challenges, our responses will be superior. It's just as simple as that. As donors, we can do a lot to provide women with the resources to increase their leadership and participation skills. Another challenge is that we really need to promote women's economic independence and empowerment, and this is still something that, as I've mentioned, women are really struggling with around the world. And of course, violence remains always and everywhere a vicious scourge on women's lives. It's a violation of human rights if women cannot live their lives in safety. And we know that in parts of our region, um, there is you know, overwhelming levels of violence that women live with. Australia is scaling up its commitment to gender equality in each of these areas. For example, recently Australia and Unifem Pacific are working on a new program for women in the Pacific, cutting across from starting from grassroots communi community engagement to high level parliamentary discussions um, and work with MPs to give women in the Pacific the skills they need to stand for election and to ensure that they will be welcomed when they are elected. Australia is committed more to advancing gender equality in our region. The voices of women and men, girls and boys, need to be heard if their development needs are to be met. And I think over the next few months you'll see some significant commitments coming down the pipe. 
This is why the Development Assistance Program has established gender equality as a principle that applies to all our work, from education to infrastructure, economic governance to environmental stability. Climate change, environmental degradation and food security all require women to be directly engaged in the response. As donors, we really need to work with, with partner countries to improve their data collection, because if you look at data collections around the world, the Pacific particularly is just a black hole. We just don't know what's going on for women and men in, in our region. Um, better data makes for better outcomes. The more informed we are, the more we can help to promote gender equality. And so I'm really pleased to be here tonight and we'll be listening closely to the discussion. I believe that donors need to engage closely and cooperatively with academics, civil society and communities in our own country, such as tonight, but more importantly in our partner countries. It's the communities after all and civil society, along with governments, that need to define what gender equality means in each country. While most countries in our region have signed CEDAW, the United Nations Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination, and most of them have some form of policy statement, constitutional embedment um, of gender equality, um, Many of most of our partner countries are still yet to define what they really want for gender equality and what that means in their cultural context. I think that we really need to listen to the communities and particularly civil society to help to develop that vision. International commitments need to be brought home. They need to be domesticated in each country so that they can function effectively in the context of their own society. Communities and civil society representatives play a really crucial role in this, and this is why I'm particularly pleased to have Emele Duitaraga here tonight with her experience in government, academia and development work in the Pacific. And congratulations to World Vision and to IWDA for organising this forum. It's really important. And thank you for coming this evening. I'm really looking for an in forward to an interesting conversation, and I hope we can all participate in the discussion, because, as we know, global poverty really does affect everybody. We can't be isolated or removed from it and we need to engage all of our societies, women and men. So thanks very much. <laughs>